way, then you have to have wilderness first aid or one of those other trainings. Okay, that said, that's my disclaimer. So important things to remember when you take your Girl Scouts on a hike, make sure they look know what poison ivy looks like and point it out along the trail, show it to them in different, um, in fall, the poison ivy is beautiful now, but you don't want to go near it. Um, so make sure they know what that looks like and other poisonous plants in your area. Make sure they use the buddy system, dress like an onion. So many layers, right? So that they can take them off or put them on as it's needed because it changes a lot when you're hiking. Uh, dress for the weather. Bring your Girl Scout paperwork, so permission slips with emergency contacts and their health history records. And they shouldn't take up too much weight, just fold them all and stick them in your backpack. And have an emergency contact person back at home who knows where you're going and when to expect you back. And in our house, we have a whiteboard on the fridge and my husband hikes frequently. And anytime he goes, I make sure he tells me when he left, because most of the time I'm still asleep. When he left and where he's going, the trail he's taking to get there, when he'll be down, and when he expects to be home. Because sometimes when he comes down, there's no service. So you wanna have somebody at home who knows how to contact your parents so that um, they know where you're going and when you're gonna be back. So what to bring. And all of the um, pictures that I'm using in this presentation are all pictures of me with either my family or with my Girl Scouts. So I've been hiking with my Girl Scouts since they were daisies in 1999 was when I had my first daisy troop. So these are girls from that first troop and this is us at Sabaday Falls in the White Mountains. So if you have questions about where we are in any of the pictures, just let me know. I'll try to let you know where we are. So there's a Girl Scout by the name of Rosie McQuilkin, who for her silver award wrote this book called Get Outdoors. And um, she has a little video called What's in My Backpack? And we will um, take a look at that. It's about seven minutes long, but she wrote Get Outdoors at age 14 as a Girl Scout Silver Award project. And right now it's being distributed free of charge to youth environmental education centers. And it's also for sale at uh, barnesandnobles.com online. That's where I got my copy. And what council is she from? She's from our council, the Girl Scouts of the Green and White Mountains. In fact, in the back of the book, she has a little section, you know, an acknowledgement section thanking people. And she thanked the Beaverbrook Association, which is um, over in Hollis, somewhere in New Hampshire. Hollis. <laughs> in Hollis, thank you. So yes, she's from our council. So I'm excited to show you this video. She's, she's really cute and um, I think she does a good job with it. So this is her video called What's in My Backpack? Oh no, that's not the video, hold on. There we go. Hi, my name is Rosie and I'm the 15 year old author of Get Outdoors, Memories of a Childhood Spent in the Woods. Today I'm going to be teaching you what I carry in my pack when I go hiking on a day hike um, using the list that I have in my book. And I'm also going to bring you along on a short hike to demonstrate how I use each of the things that I'm bringing. So let's get started. Here's my pack all ready to go hiking, but let's get into it to see what I'm bringing. I always bring a map and compass on my hikes because if I were to get lost, it will help me find my way out of the woods. Sun protection is very important on your hikes to make sure that you don't get a sunburn. So I have sunscreen, a hat, and sunglasses. This hat also doubles as a bug net, just hiding in the top. Just in case it's buggy on my hike, this will keep my face protected from the bugs. This multi-tool is always in my pack in case I need one of the many tools included on it. 
It's really important to always bring enough food for the planned hike plus a few more bars or something extra just in case you were to take longer than you were expecting to. This emergency space blanket will keep you warm just in case you have to spend an extra night out in the woods and you don't have equipment for that. This striker is helpful if you need to make a fire in the woods for some reason. It's always important to bring enough water for your hike and just in case you run out, it's a good idea to bring a water purification um, device. So here I have this Life Straw. It's a very affordable um, version of water purification. Just in case you were to get hurt on a hike, it's important to bring a first aid kit. This one just has very basic things. But if you're planning on going out on a longer, more strenuous hike, it's important to bring a larger first aid kit. I have this fleece because it's always important to bring one or two more layers than you think you'll need just in case you get caught in a rainstorm or it gets colder than you're expecting or like I said before if you have to spend a night out that you didn't think you were going to have to do. I always bring a hat and gloves on my hikes even in the summer just in case it's windy or cold on the top of the mountain or the temperature drops for some reason. I often also bring this ear warmer just for the same reason. It's important to always bring a headlamp just in case you get caught out later than you expected and it gets dark. I always keep a bandana on the outside of my backpack just in case I need to wrap a wound or I can use it to make myself more comfortable if it's hot out by wiping sweat away or getting it wet and putting it on my forehead to cool myself down. So bandanas are very versatile so I really recommend bringing one with you. I always wear breathable non-cotton clothing that is quick dry just in case I were to get wet so I couldn't get hypothermia because my clothes would dry quickly. I also wear zip off pants because I always start the hike with my long pants on. I can unzip the pant legs and take them off if I get too hot to make them into shorts. Just in case it started raining I always have a pack cover in my bag to keep my pack dry and a poncho um, and if I see rain on the forecast I will bring a rain jacket with me also. It's important to bring at least one pair of extra socks just in case your feet get wet. It's really not fun to have wet boots and then you'll get blisters on your feet most likely. It's important to always make sure you have a whistle on your pack. Just in case you were to get in trouble, you can whistle and if there's another hiker in the woods, they'll try to come find you and help you out.
I hope you found this information helpful and I hope you have many fun and safe outdoor adventures of your own. For more information on my book, make sure to check out getoutdoorsbook.com. All right. I can't imagine what she's going to do for her gold award, having a book selling in Barnes and Nobles. So um, the starred items here are the 10 hiking essentials. Um, so the way that I do it is that I have this stuff sack. And in this bag, I have um, all of the items on the left hand side so that no matter where I'm going, even if I'm going on a three mile walk with my dog, I just put this in my day pack so that I have the absolute essentials. And depending on the pack I'm using um, and how far I'm going, I'll just move that bag from pack to pack. Um, so I'll have my compass, first aid, flashlight and extra batteries, matches and fire starter, a pocket knife, a whistle, bandanas, a life straw, which I actually don't have, but I'm gonna pick one up. So those are, if you haven't heard of them before, I looked into it um, for this presentation and they're pretty inexpensive. They're under $20. You can get them from Amazon and some hiking stores. Um, and basically it's, it's about this big and has two little caps on either end and you prime it just by putting it in water so that the, the water gets into the filter and then blow the water out and then you close it and then you take it with you. So with a life straw, you drink from the source. So if you run out of water, there's no way to get it from the life straw into your bottle. So you just stick the life straw literally into a lake a puddle <laughs> and it kills all the bacteria and actually comes out clear and you can look it up and look up different YouTube videos on people this one guy had two clear jars and he sucked the water he, he lifted some yucky muddy water from a puddle in the in in the woods and literally sucked the water out of the puddle and and spit it into that jar and it's amazing how clean it was and then he just drank the whole thing he said it tastes he said it tastes better than tap water is that what so she the, had in her pack that's what she had in her pack was a life straw okay. yep so she said it's an affordable way to have something in case you run out of water and you need something that is pretty cool it is cool Yep, and then also in here I have a little toilet paper kit. So I have a roll of toilet paper because as a woman, I can't just go point and shoot. I have to actually have some things and you wanna make sure you pack out. We'll talk about this in a few minutes, but um, pack out your toilet paper. And if you think you're gonna to have to go number two, you wanna make sure you have a hiking trowel with you, something to dig because you'll also have to bury that but pack out your toilet paper. Um, so what I add for each trip, in addition to what's in my bag, my food and water for that trip, a map of the area that I'm going to, rain and wind gear, because even if it's a beautiful day, you never know what it's gonna be like if you're hiking up to a summit. Warm clothing with extra socks, just like she said. Uh, sun protection, um, a hat, sunscreen, and insect repellent and or a bug net. So the starred items, there are 10 essentials. You'll see 11 starred items because if you look up the 10 essentials, different organizations have different, um, it only varies slightly. So some organizations say um, map and compass is one item, not two, and they do put sunscreen as an essential item. So um, if you're looking, don't be confused by that. And always, always bring a map. Don't rely on your cell phone and your cell phone's GPS to help you get where you're going. Even if you're gonna use that, make sure you have a map of the area you're going and know how to use it. Uh, my daughter and I, my younger daughter, went on a hike to Mizbah Hut once and at a junction where we were having our lunch, 
these two women came to the junction and they were they had their cell phone out i can't get service i lost the map i don't know which way to go they didn't know so i you know hearing their conversation i let them use the map and i helped them look at it and point them in the right direction depending on where they were going um, which was not to the hut they were going in the other direction so make sure you always have a map that's really important and in case your phone dies because if you get to an area and it's really cold it'll die faster so uh, i'm going to go back for one second so no matter what age group, because I was talking about how we can take all different ages hiking. Um, if I'm hiking with Cadet Senior Ambassador, I make sure they carry all their stuff. Everything that you see here is what they should carry just as a matter of habit. So they get used to having all these things with them. I always, even if I'm taking daisies, carry these things. Like I said, even if I'm taking my dog, somewhere in the woods for a walk. I usually try to make sure I have these things. Um, if you have juniors, it could depend on where you're going and how small they are. Maybe fourth grade juniors might not be able to carry as much. Um, and daisies and brownies, since it's more that you're introducing hiking to them, it'll most likely be a shorter walk at a farm. Um, have them carry a backpack because they want to feel like they're hiking but also have them carry in their backpack their own water and their snack or their lunch a bandana uh, a sweatshirt or a sweater and that's really enough and a map of the area so if you're taking them to a conservation area in your town usually online you can find maps and let them get used to reading a simple map the Audubon Society has simple maps and you can stop and you can just show them where you are and where you're going just so they start getting used to it. And we'll talk about that as well in a few minutes. So extras you could have the girls carry depending on where you're going and what you're gonna do. Um, a journal and a pen is nice to have so that they can reflect on their hike or they can sketch. Um, paper and crayons for rubbing an ID book if they have one at home that they want to bring or if you have one that you want to bring um, a little magnifying glass you can probably get a dozen at Oriental Trading Company for for not much money and and they can look at bugs or plants and then what else do you guys think that could be an extra thing or, or maybe something that I missed that um, that you always like to take in your backpack when you go hiking or when you hike with your girls. Anybody have any thoughts? One thing that I always bring, because having a pair of a uh, dry pair of socks is, is important, but I always bring two tube like type plastic bags because if your shoes and socks get wet, you can put on the fresh pair of socks, put the bags over your feet, and then put your wet shoes back on and not be soaking through your dry socks. Yeah, I grew up doing that in the winter time. Yes. The Wonder Bread bags over my socks Bingo. before I put them in the boots. <laughs> right. That's a good idea. Yeah. Anybody else have any thoughts on that? All right. Sue, how do you feel about walking sticks? Because the girls are all about, oh, I got to have a stick. So if they want to carry a walking stick, I think it's great. Yeah. Um, I had a walking stick. I think it helps me, especially coming down the mountain to, um, to help support myself. But I'm old and I have older knees. Uh, sometimes I just carry it next to me. Sometimes I use the ski poles. My husband got me a pair of those. So I think whatever makes them feel like they're really hiking, I think it's, I think it's cool to bring those. And they can always just carry them next to them if they don't want to. If their ski poles retract, they can stick them in their backpack. And if, they, if it's a stick they found in the woods and they don't want to carry it anymore, they can chuck it back into the woods. <laughs> All right. 
Okay. So where to go? So this picture, this picture was taken at a state park in Maine. So before you take them anywhere, I suggest, um, you know, doing some homework about where you're going. So pick up a hiking guide and look for hiking guides that are obviously for the area that you live in and that you'll be hiking in, but best hikes with children, nature hikes, what's, you know, maybe there's a section on what's in it for kids and how to keep them engaged and something with the degree of difficulty. So the degree of difficulty, a word on that, this photo is from Mount Willard in Crawford Notch, which is up in the White Mountains. And my husband thinks of this hike as an easy hike um, with a spectacular view, as you can see. I think of it as a moderate hike. For me, it's more of a moderate hike. Um, so, the degrees of difficulty, it will vary by person. So know your abilities and know your hiking, your hikers abilities, your girls and the people hiking with you as well. So that's part of the homework, I guess, is knowing how, how everybody's physical health is. So another thing to think about is why do the girls want to go hiking? Um, are they trying to get requirements for a badge? Do they want to do some letterboxing or geocaching? Are they going to learn about an area? Maybe there's an area that's historical or an area with wetlands. Or do they want to go to see a waterfall or to conquer a summit? So this photo here is on top of Mount Cardigan. And normally it has a gorgeous view. But this particular day, it did not have such a gorgeous view. <laughs> but they wanted to conquer a summit, and that's what we did, and they loved it. Um, so for daisies and brownies, or new hikers, even some juniors, if they've never been hiking before, um, you could check into Audubon centers, and they all, there's one in Manchester and one in Concord, and there's also one in Hunting, Huntington, Vermont. But I'm guessing there's Audubon, Audubon centers in every state, or most states, anyway. Um, and they have maps online, so you can go for a shorter hike, you can go for a, a medium length or a longer hike. Town conservation areas I mentioned earlier. State parks, there are many, many hikes in state parks. Uh, again, make sure you print out a state park map because if you go to Pawtuckaway State Park, as we were talking last night on the geocaching workshop, Pawtuckaway State Park does not have good service. So if you're trying to rely on your phone to do some hikes in that state park, you'll be out of luck. So make sure you bring a map. So for daisies, new hikers, short, easy walks to learn and instill a love of hiking. So this was... Um, this was at Robert Frost Farm here in Derry, and those were our daisies. Those were um, the daisy troop of my younger daughter. How about rail trails, right? Oh, yes. Excellent. Yeah. I mean, if you guys have suggestions, rail trails would be awesome. Um, I know the one in Wyndham has all these offshoots where it really feels like you're not on a paved bike trail, but off in the woods that comes right back around to the trail. So rail trails are also a great place. Anybody else have any other suggestions of where you could bring the youngest of our Girl Scouts? So there are a lot of um, like community parks, I guess. So like Mine Falls in, Man in uh, Nashua is mm -hmm. a great park for beginners because it's, yeah. it's all flat it's paved it's beautiful around the um the river and the canals yeah that's great benson's in by hudson. the ocean Ooh, sorry go ahead sorry. Jan. benson's in hudson also has a combination of both paved trails and some longer uh unpaved ones it's a good one yeah that's great i haven't been over there yet i'll have to check that out yeah, it's, it's not like advanced, but it's, it's fun for younger ones. A great place for, yeah, for the youngest hikers. That's terrific. 
And yes, along the seacoast, I heard somebody start to say, uh, Odeorn Point is a great one, and they have the Sea Science Center, uh, Seaside, Sea, Seacoast Science Center, right, right there. So it could be a combo trip. Um, so for juniors, obviously you're going to move up a little bit, still sticking with the easier hikes because you don't want to turn them off at that age. They're fourth and fifth grade. It could go either way. Um, so easy and the gung-ho hikers could do more of a moderate hike a little bit longer. Uh, the one on the left is at Greenfield State Park. Those are with our, um, our Girl Scouts that we have now. And the picture on the right is from Wolf Neck, Wolf Neck Woods State Park up in Maine, which is a wonderful place to walk. You have the woods and you have the Maine coastline. And you can vary the lengths of those walks as well. And it's in Freeport, so you can hit L.L. Bean or Ben and Jerry's <laughs> for ice cream. So that's one of my favorite hikes for obvious reasons. Cadet Senior Ambassador. Um, more experienced hikers, anywhere from moderate to more challenging hikes. So the girls on the left are my older daughter's troop and we hiked Mount Cardigan uh, and it rained and was lousy and that, that's the summit uh, picture that you saw earlier. And the picture on the right is my daughter when we were out in, um, a national park down in Virginia. Skyline Drive. Anybody know what that is? <laughs> Sorry, I have a brain cloud. I'll get it though. So what to do, keeping it fun. So this, um, this picture again, this is not those Girl Scouts on Cardigan. This is in Acadia National Park on top of Cadillac Mountain which is also has a gorgeous view looking down on the ocean and Bar Harbor. And we just did not luck out on this weekend. So um, with what to do, um, being prepared is one thing you can definitely do. Um, know where you're going, which is really important, staying positive even on the rainy days and staying flexible because the trail might be closed for some reason or might be rerouted. Um, if you get to a junction and you're not sure which way to go and you're pulling out your map and can't figure out where you are on the map and how to get to where you're going, it's going to make the girls anxious, which isn't much fun. Um, I was with my younger daughter on that trip to Mizpah, and when we left the next day to head out um, from the hut, I took the wrong trail. But um, after five minutes, I noticed that the blazes were white. So keep an eye on the blazes that are on the trees um, if you're hiking somewhere more remote, because those will tell you which way to go. We should have been following the blue trail and we were on the white trail, which is the Appalachian Trail. So we're headed south on the Appalachian Trail. So immediately I pulled out my map. My daughter got a little nervous because she knew we were going the wrong way, but I showed her where we were on the map and said, we need to go back to the hut and take the other trail <laughs> that has the blue blazes. So even the younger girls, if they're on any trail um, that has marks on the trees, let them help you look for them. Even if you know which way to go and where they all are, just to get in the habit of seeing where they are and what color they're following. If the weather's not cooperating, as long as you keep smiling, they will too. So even though it was wet and I was soaked, I tried to have fun for them and, and they had a blast on this very damp, rainy, cold, windy hike. <laughs> So other things that we can do, um, we can make our own 
Gorp, good old raisins and peanuts. Let the girls each bring an ingredient. You can either throw them all in a bowl and mix them up with a big wooden spoon and let them fill their, their baggies with them to take on their hike. Or you can have a setup where you have them all out on the table and let the girls fill their own bags with just what they like. Either way, that's a really fun thing for the girls to be able to do take breaks often. So um, one thing that, uh, that I've heard is that you can only hike as fast as your slowest hiker. So I, in my family, am the slowest hiker. And one thing that I find frustrating for me is that when I catch up to the group, when they wait for me and take their rest and I get there, they're like, okay, mom's here, let's go. And I don't have quite enough time to catch my breath before it's time to go. So um, make sure that once your group is together, you take a good amount of time so that those last people that got here got in your, your group has a chance to rest a little bit too and take some water and, and do what you need to. When our kids and their cousins were young and we did a lot of hiking, we would say, all right, I know you're getting tired, let's hike for 15 minutes and then we'll take a break. And that gives them a little bit of motivation and they can ask how much longer and as long as you're keeping the conversation going and keeping things moving, then the time goes pretty quick when they can take that break. So um, activities to try to keep the monotony of walking in the woods at, woods at bay and to make the time and the distance go by a little bit faster. So um, in this photo of the daisies, we're doing a scavenger hunt. You can see that they're holding their little pictures um, and their pencils. So we did a scavenger hunt on this one. You can sing songs and tell jokes. Let them tell jokes and choose songs to sing, uh, tell stories and let them tell stories. You could do the I'm going on a hike alphabet game. Uh, there are a lot of things that you can do. Does anyone have any other ideas? I, I have more in here, but um, there's definitely a lot you can do. Find those teachable moments and be a question asker. So ask the girls, why do you think we need to stay on the trail? I keep telling you, stay on the trail. Why do you think that is? And see what they say. They might say, oh, so we don't get lost. Um, that's definitely a big one. But what I would be looking for is, is to not um, step on, on the, the nature and so forth that's, that's not on the trail. So you can point out some moss and point out moss that's, that's on the trail and how it's tramped down and, and losing its color and it doesn't look very healthy. And then when you get to a point where there's moss growing in the woods on the tree trunks or, or on the ground, you can show them how lush and green and, and alive it looks and how if we went over there and stepped on it, it would, it would kill it. Um, especially above tree line, you know, you might be above tree line with older girls and it looks like it's just all open rock um, or at least small brush that where they could go and walk, but you still want to encourage them to stay on the trail because a lot of those alpine flowers are also very fragile and some might not recover. Um, and you can share any knowledge that you have, uh, how to identify different birds. If you hear a bird and you know what it is, you can, you can tell them, do you hear that bird? What do you think it is? Um, and then bugs, plants, trees, I'm sure you're a fountain of knowledge, but even if you're not, you must know a, a pine tree from a maple tree and why the pine trees don't lose their leaves when the maple tree does this, even things that you think, oh, these kids will know that. It's always fun to, to teach them. So for the older kids, you can let them practice map and compass skills. Um, keeping in mind their age, I tried a workshop with daisies uh, <laughs> learning compasses and they're definitely too young to get the concept of, of direction and, and magnet, mag even just something as simple as, as figure out which way is north. It was hard for them. So 
you can teach them about maps and the older girls you can teach them about compasses and contour lines on a map and show them how how maps will tell you so this this map of the white mountains tells me that every contour line is a hundred feet so um you can explain to the girls that as the contour lines are closer together that's a steeper area and if you're walking parallel to the lines it's a nice flat walk and it's an easy walk whereas if you're going across the lines you're going up or down and if they're closer together it's steeper so things like that you can teach them have them pull out the maps when you're at a spot like this so this is also at acadia um, and you can have them pull out their map and show them where that pond is so so that's jordan pond right down there and you can see it right oh sorry next we'll be looking at frogs and snakes but right here on the map is where jordan pond is so once they locate that they can find out what you know i look over here to the right and what do i see i see another mountain so let's look on the map and somebody tell me what mountain we're looking at and things like that you can get from a map so it's kind of cool it's um it's fun stuff and if you don't know about map and compass you could you could find courses online you could sign up for farnsworth weekend courses um, about map and compass and about water filters and all of these things we can teach you um, at different times so encouraged the girls to yeah. use all so I, I, janet made a comment that she had hiked down the wrong side of the mountain with a group of cits once oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> That was wow. Yeah. So did you go all the way down? Yep. And then we yeah. figured out we weren't where we were supposed to be. And the leader went into the, there was a house nearby, fortunately. She went into the house and called the camp and said, yeah, we're kind of here. Oh, good. But yeah. It's still an adventure. Come get us. <laughs> if you have Come to get climb, us. Yeah. If you have to climb over a tree trunk to get to where you're going, you're probably going the wrong way. Yeah. That's something I learned. But it was yeah. Fun. I was fortunate to notice the white blazes on my adventure. We would have been somewhere in Georgia. I don't know. I would have realized at some point. It's always good to have a cell phone as well. Even if you have it off and in your bag to save the battery life, you never know if you can get a signal in the event that you end up where you're not supposed to be. So you can call someone to pick you up. This was in the 80s, so oh, I didn't have that option. Oh, but um, right. yeah, I was the CIT, well, a CIT at the time. But. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's, yeah. all right. So, um, so encourage them to just not look at things, but to hear what's around them and touch them and smell, you know, talk about what, what the area smells like. If you're in a boggy area, if you're hiking at Odeon Point and you're near the sea, you know, if it's low tide, it's gonna be a different smell than if it's high tide. Um, or if you're in the forest in a in an evergreen area with a lot of evergreens and you can smell the the pine. Um, so here on the left, um, those are our Girl Scouts with a snake. And this is girls helping girls. So the girl in yellow picked up the snake and the girl in pink really wanted to hold it. So um, she was helping her to be able to hold this snake. And then obviously the one on the right is a frog and if they learn how to gently handle snakes and frogs and other small and safe small safe animals um and then gently put them back in the water where they belong and it's a it's a cool it just enhances the experience for them <clears throat> Look, listen, and learn about the beauty of the area. So if you're in an area that has, this is at Wolf Neck Woods State Park up there in Freeport, Maine. Uh, they have an osprey nesting area. Um, you can see this one osprey right there. And if you look over here, there's another osprey sitting on top of the nest right there. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but um, point out things as you come to these plaques. I would not read the entire plaque to them. I would only pull out the interesting parts of it, depending on their age again. So this is a wetland area. 
you know, you can ask them what lives in a wetland and, and see if they know and uh, hear what they say. You know, they might say frogs and salamanders and ducks and dragonflies. And so this is a good place where you're not just looking at the view right here, but you're thinking about what, what is living in there, you know, and, and talking about that and thinking about that. So I try to only get touch on the, the most interesting. Did you guys know that, that such and such lives here or, you know, it's some things can be interesting, but reading the whole thing to a group of older girls might <laughs> put them to sleep and never want to hike again. You always want to remind them uh, to respect historical artifacts, um, respect the past. So this is at Lincoln Woods up north where you can hike along an old railroad bed and those are old railroad ties right there. There are a couple of um, parts of the track itself over on the side and those are all historic artifacts. You can see some of the nails that are in some of those railroad ties that are still in there and you want to make sure they're not trying to pry them up and take them home as a souvenir. Um, and you know, obviously not defacing anything like that railroad bridge um, or anything like that. Talking with them as you hike about the, the leave no trace principles um, as a good learning experience. Um, if you talked about them ahead of time, which hopefully um, you did depending on their age, you can talk about it again. Tell me the seven, who can remember the seven leave no hike principles? I mean, leave no trail, <laughs> leave no trace. <laughs> so plan ahead and be prepared. Know before you go. Travel and camp on durable surfaces. So if you're going to camp, obviously you need different training for that, but you want to camp on established campsites and you want to hike on established trails, not off the trail, not if you see the trail over there, hey, let's cut through. You want to stay on the established trail. Dispose of waste properly, so pack in and pack out your trash. Um, and if you do have human waste, you wanna make sure you bury it in an eight inch deep cat hole, 200 feet from a water source uh, or a trail. And the same with washing dishes, if you're out camping overnight and again, that's a different workshop. That's also 200, so 200 is the magic number to be uh, camped away from trails and washing dishes and so forth from a water source. So leave what you find. So leave only footprints and take only pictures. Um, and now you don't wanna be digging trenches around your, your tents like we used to to keep the water out. Nothing, nothing like that. You don't wanna change the area that you're, you're camping or walking in. Minimizing campfire impacts. So if you don't have to have a campfire to cook, use a backpacking stove, right? Um, and fuel. And that's a much better way to, to, to not impact the land that you're at. And if you do build a fire, make sure it's an established pit. Respect wildlife. So make sure the girls don't feed even a chipmunk or a bird or the seagulls if you're out near the seacoast. Uh, and if they spill their trail mix, have them clean it up and put it in the trash that she's carrying. Um, and be considerate of other visitors. Others might actually be listening to nature or enjoying the quiet. And on that Lincoln Woods Trail, we were hiking and a family came by and the guy had a big boom box, remember those, on his shoulder and we could hear him, I swear, for a half mile away. The music blaring and it just, we could hear it for so long and it was very unfortunate. He was not practicing the seventh leave no trace principle. That's for sure. Uh, take lots of pictures. So take some, some be creative pictures with the girls and I'm sure they can come up with a ton of things, have them, you know, if someone's in the distance, I'm sure you've all done this already and have someone look like they're standing on your hand or on your head or like you're holding them or anything like that is fun. And the girls would love to look at them afterwards. Lots and lots of pictures They make great memories.
So um, other ideas, some of these we already mentioned. Let me just check the time. Scavenger hunts, hug a tree. So uh, what that is for those who might not know, if you pair the girls up and put a bandana as a blindfold on one of them, the girl will lead her to a tree and then the blindfolded girl can touch the tree and see how round it is and get a feel for it, literally, and then be led back to the same spot. Take off her blindfold and she has to find her tree. And that's sort of just a fun little thing you could do um, if you're in an area where, where that's a good thing to do. Leaf and bark rubbings, journaling and drawing, logic games or riddles. So logic games really are riddles. And if you don't know what a logic game is, you can look it up. But be forewarned, some people are frustrated by logic games and don't like them. But that is something you could do for those that like them. Journey or badge activities, scouts own ceremonies. If you end up in a beautiful place or on the, on the peak of a mountain and they're feeling reflective, nature mandalas or uh, invent an animal using found objects found on the ground. Uh, if you tree, see a tree stump, you could count the rings and talk about the many uses of a bandana and see how many they can think of. There's at least a hundred. So these are nature mandalas. So the ones on the left, and these are both from two different Farnsworth weekend workshops that uh, one that I took myself and one that I led. So the one on the left is nature mandalas where you just take things from nature off the ground, nothing off the trees, and you make very symmetrical round and it's supposed to be a very quiet meditative activity. Um, and the, the ones on the right are just fun. Maybe the younger girls would like them just making little pictures out of things and then just remember to once you're done, make sure they put them back where they found them in the woods. Uh, so for after the hike, um, just to keep it ending on a high note, cold drinks in the cooler is a wonderful thing to have if it's hot and you're hiking uh, because your water is not hot in your backpack if it's been in there most of the day uh, and fun snacks to have back at the car like s'mores bars maybe or baggies of individual snacks something fun that they'll remember pizza we love as a family having pizza after a hike it's it's what we do most it's our favorite. Uh, stopping for ice cream is also a fun thing. So something fun to help them remember the hike as, oh yes, I want to do this again. <laughs> uh, younger girls or older ones, they may just want to sleep on the way home and not do anything. And that's also very enjoyable. So when we're done, um, Dee Dee will I'm going to send Dee Dee a resource page that I have that I made up and on it you'll find my email address which is there. Uh, the U.S. Forest Service Hike Safe Program, the AMC Appalachian Mountain Club, ANPR is the um, <laughs> National Park, you know I meant to, it's got the Lost But Found Safe and Sound Program. The, these are written out in the resource, so you don't have to guess like I do. So the Lost But Found Safe and Sound program is something you can do with your girls, especially the younger ones. They, um, they recommend for seven and up this program that teaches them what to do if they happen to get lost when they're hiking with their family, with their Girl Scouts, hopefully with the buddy system, none of our girls will get lost. But this is a really good program to look at and to teach your girls. It has a great video that you can show them and it teaches you different things like how to make footprints. Um, in fact, in this series, uh, Michelle Fontaine did a workshop. So you could look it up and view it on the Girl Scouts of the Green White Mountains website. And that's a really good thing to do with your girls before you go hiking. The Get Outdoors book, I have, um, I have a link in my resource page for how to find that. That's the one that Rosie McQuilton did for her Civil Award. That's this book here. 
And then the safety activity points for the Girl Scouts of the Green and White Mountains will be on there. The Junior Ranger Program and Junior Snow Ranger Activity books are from the White Mountain National Forest. And those are a really great resource to have if you have younger girls. There's all kinds of activities in here for them to do. There's one about the 10 essentials that has about 20 items and they have to find the 10. And one thing that, that we like to do with our girls is put all of those into a backpack, all of the items, a teddy bear, um, a, a hand weight, all of the 10 essentials plus everything you really don't want to bring with you and have them pick out what they think the 10 essentials are. So that's kind of a fun thing. So that's in this activity book that you can request from them and you can also download it online. So that'll be in my resource. And information on Scout's own ceremony. If you've never done one, you could take a look at this and hopefully your girls would be interested in doing a Scout's own ceremony at some point. That's all I've got for you. <laughs> so thank you. If anybody has any, I think we have four minutes. <laughs> so if anybody has questions, we should probably take those first. But if anybody has ideas or stories they want to share, then we can, um, we can open it up now. So, so how do you, what do you talk to the girls about um, shoes? I, I have my story of we were taking our girls on a hike and one of them arrives, you know, I think they were cadets and she arrives in her platform sandals. Mm -hmm. and so how did you approach that? Right. So when we talk about what to bring and what to wear, when we're talking especially about clothing, then we talk about no open-toed sandals and um, sturdy shoes. It depends on where you're going, but sneakers for some hikes is fine. A more sturdy boot would be better for other hikes. So depending on where we're going, that's when we kind of talk about shoes. But yeah. So you mentioned the best hikes with children and I pulled out my book, I can't show it. This was my best hikes with children book in New Hampshire, Vermont and Maine. Do you have the same one? Mine's old. <laughs> oh wait, this isn't the one. Oh, I pulled out. The, so this, there's this one here. This is an old one, best it hikes for children. Pretty similar, yeah. yeah. And I also have a white, oh, here it is. So this one is Nature Hikes in the White Mountains. This is another good one. Both of oh, them, good. both of them are kind of out of date. Um, yeah. Mine I don't is really know if they're date. still, I think that this one might be out of print, but you could probably get it on eBay. But, you know, they have tons of books like these that you could find at Barnes and Nobles or another bookstore or Amazon that has really good information. No, it, it hits. It, you, you hit on all the great high points of a lot of the things that they mention in the book of how to keep it fun and, and everything mm -hmm. like that. So yeah. Salamanders. Salamanders are great on a, on a fall. Yep. On a fall hike in Mount Mananoc area. There's a lot of little orange slimy oh, yeah. things that I wouldn't pick up, but they're cool to look at. <laughs> yeah. Good. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes, thank so you. I know, I know getting started is, is really um, kind of overwhelming because there are so many options available. And when you're just getting started, it's hard to know about, like you said, the, the, um, the, the level, the intensity level of the hike right. and how much time it's going to take. So um, I suggest shorter hikes with your troop that hasn't hiked. Um, there's a, a cadet badge. I think it's the cadet hiker badge that suggests, or one of the requirements is that you go on three 30 minute hikes. So that's 30 minute hikes. So you can gauge that on, on how far you go in 30 minutes, um, depending on the hike. Yeah, so I would just suggest doing shorter hikes like 30 minutes or or a mile you could do a mile in 20 minutes usually if it's an easy hike and see how they do i have a pretty good sense of the 
abilities in my troop and also who likes and does not like to hike. Mm -hmm. So, and it's just from hiking with them through the years. So, you know, we always talk about progression in Girl Scouts too. So you want to make sure you do start out smaller with daisies and you'll get to know them over time. And if you have older girls that join you, you could even ask her about her hiking experience. Maybe she hikes a lot with her family. Maybe she's never put on a hiking boot. So, so um, like the book, this book sh talks about each of the hikes and it says about how long it should take and mm -hmm. the distance and stuff. Is that online? Like if you go on and you look at different hiking trails, does it say any of that online? Do you know? I don't know. Um, Think it back to the there's, geocaching. There's, there's, an app, <laughs> there's an app in New Hampshire for the hiking trails and oh. it, will tell, it will tell you which path you take, how long it average how long it would okay, take that's cool good is that the all trails I, that's what yeah. i was just going to ask <laughs> yeah. is it all trails yeah. okay yeah and and is that pretty reliable you think that that yeah. all trails yes and i think you know depending upon your level so if you're you know really experienced expert hiker and it says average two hours for this path this trail okay that's an expert on the expert trail it's going to take me five <laughs> you know? right 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's accurate to a point, I think, because I was using it once at a trail in Wyndham, and uh, every once in a while I'd pull out my phone to see which way to go, and it would tell me I was somewhere in the middle of this green area that was not anywhere close to the trail, <laughs> so sometimes we had to guess, so I still like to print out my map, but... Um, yeah, I'm sure nowadays you can find tons of information online. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of different hiking abilities. and. Mm -hmm. So Parent Magazine, and I think this was because of, um, of the whole pandemic and trying to get people to go out hiking, but not everybody going to the same tried and true, you know, uh, everybody goes to Arethusa Falls, you know, or Mount Major or... So, so they're trying to introduce um, more obscure paths and um, introduce the uh, the simpler paths, uh, trails that are you know for toddlers or young kids. Um, it's through the New Hampshire Forest Society, I think. Um, and they, they offered a challenge. I think it's just finishing the end of October here, but you pick five, five hikes and they send you trail maps and a bandana. Wow. And, and it was really cool because we went and checked out some places. There was one in uh, Concord, which was along the Merrimack River. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the, the flood plains of the Merrimack River or something like that um, but it was educational and it was um, there, there's postings and they are having you um, monitor the erosion of the area oh. and so it was really it was really neat and it brought you to places that aren't as popular and and crowded that's the society for the protection of new hampshire forest the same thing yeah i think that's it mentioned last night in the geocaching website mm -hmm. and you're right sue she mentioned those are like just not as many people yeah unique and and things like that yeah we so, did uh another hike that was over in milford i think it was on the milford hollis line and it was the monson um yeah uh, village and that is also in a new hampshire's haunted hikes um so this is like one of the first inland um uh communities that was built and now there's just like cement uh like rock cellars um like the foundations of their the the houses the huts that they used to live in so it was really cool. It, was, it just, again, opens up the, the possibility of places that you wouldn't have known. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So if I can find that on, uh, I'll take a look and I'll add it to the resource page. All right. So I'll, I'll, look for, look. I'll look for it, Sue, and I'll send it to you. Okay. I, 
right? Yeah, it's um, I found it because I found the the thing ends on the um thirty first. The thirtieth. Yeah, I thought it was the end of October. So I just put it in the link. <laughs> ah, you so are good. so awesome. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Look at you. Excellent. Okay. Hey, this good, cool, good sharing of info. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank, Thank you, Sue. It was fantastic. Okay. Wonderful. Thank so you're you all so ready for Brownsworth weekend next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was going to say, if anybody wants, you know, those types of other things like water filters or life straw or, or map and compass, right? Let yeah. us know. Let Dee Dee know. Let me know. And we can get those to you. I would love to do a map and compass thing or, you know, whatever. Yeah. So... Give us ideas of what you want to learn. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you very Thank much. You. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.